Hi, and welcome to this webinar about georeferencing using the Avanza Suite. My name is Hans van der Magel. I'm the owner of Red Geographics, the Avanza partner in the Netherlands, and I've been using my publisher in Geographic Amateur for a very long time, more than 20 years. And in this webinar, I'm going to be talking to you about ways to georeference um, maps with the Avanza products, so my publisher in Geographic Amateur. Georeferencing is the process of taking something that is not um, in any way geographically related and turning it into something that is. So you can combine it with other GIS data or you could reproject it if you want to. Um, basically you take something that is not geographic and makes it geographic. So the first option I've the, the first scenario I've identified is this one. So it's a relatively large scale map. It looks like a modern map. It's a fairly small area, and uh, and it's in vector. Although this most of the time would work with raster as well, as long as you're staying within Illustrator. So the idea here is that we'll identify a couple of locations on this map that we can cross-reference with locations on a, an online map and then use the Map Publisher Georeferencer tool to actually build the georeference. Now this is one that I've done countless of times because this is an exercise that we always do in our standard Map Publisher training. So over the past couple of years I must have done this one maybe even close to a hundred times. Um, so I know which points I'm going to pick. But the idea is that for georeferencing you need, I think technically you can get away with three, but I generally recommend doing at least four. So you need four corresponding points on this map and an online web map. And best practice is to pick points that are close to the corners of the map, because the closer to the corners you are, the lesser the effect of any small mistakes that you make. And that, that's actually a very important thing to realize about georeferencing is that it's not an exact science. There's a, there's a likelihood, there's a chance that you will make an error, which will affect the overall accuracy of what you're getting out of it. So always keep that in mind. Um, always keep in mind that the accuracy of the end result is directly related to how careful you are with selecting this point. Now in order to do that we'll need a couple of so-called map locations, map page locations to be exact, and you can place them using the map page location tool, which is one of the map publisher tools. So the first one I'm going to select is right here, and it's going to be the center of this intersection. Now I'm picking the center rather than the rather than the edges of the road, because on this map the roads are shown with a standard width based on their um, based on their time, which may or may not correspond to the actual width that we might, for example, identify on an aerial photo. So picking the center of an intersection is usually a safer bet than picking the side of a road. So we'll pick this one here. Okay. Then for the next one, the next one we are going to pick another center of an intersection, specifically this one right here. Then going to pick let's do this corner of this barn and finally um, so this corner of the map doesn't really show anything uh, anything useful uh, what I always tend to pick is this corner of that water basin right there. So we'll sort of extrapolate those lines. 
Right, so I've got my four um, applications. And the next step is going into the Map Publisher Georeferencer. And depending on whether or not you've used it before, this might actually open up with uh, a little pop up screen saying how the process works. Um, I've obviously used this before, so I'm not getting that pop up. Um, in fact, instead, I'm going to go straight into adding world locations. So, what it's going to do is for each of the four page locations I've created, I'm going to have to point them out on this online map. I'll zoom into where we are. And switch to the satellite image. And I'm going to pick the center of this intersection. Switch to the next location, and you'll see that uh, in the background, the the main Illustrator window is actually jumping to that page location, and using these two zoom buttons, I can actually zoom in and out there. So for this one, we'll identify the center of that intersection. That is this one. And finally, number four. So, number four is posing a little bit of a, a challenge because there's trees all along this uh, the water edge. So, I'm going to guesstimate it's right about there. Okay. So it's showing the um, the let launch of the four points I picked. Now if you know what the coordinate system of your map is supposed to be, you can specify it right away. Or if you don't, you can sort of have my publisher take a guess at it. So I'm going to go let my publisher guess. And it's coming up with a, uh, a couple of um, a couple of hits. And in fact, the first four are technically all the same coordinate system, except that number two has no false easting in northern, whereas the other three do. Um, so I know that this map is located in the Netherlands. I Therefore, assume that it's highly likely that it's using the Dutch national coordinate system. And it also happens to be at the top of the list with relatively low um, error values. So it's a pretty safe bet that this is the one that it is. If, if you make a mistake, you'll either get something with very high error levels or something that seems really um, unlikely, but again, I, looks like I did a pretty good job, and this is the, probably the one. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to create a new map view with that coordinate system with the settings that I've just sort of referenced, and it's asking me if I want to add any layers from the original map to that map view. Um, you can certainly choose to do that, but you don't have to. Um, keep in mind that for every layer that you select here, you'll be asked what the feature type is, whether it's points or lines or areas or text. And so if you select all of your layers and there's a lot of them, it's going to be a bit of a tedious process. Um, it'll create the map view anyway, and you can always, using the map view panel, you can always drag layers into the map view at a later stage anyway. So usually I don't bother with this right now, I just want to go ahead and create the map view. And it tells me that if I choose the map locations tool again, it will display the map world locations in relation to the map page locations. So we can sort of see what kind of errors we've made. Okay. So you see right here that uh, that this one it's a little bit off. Um, 
but the other three actually look pretty darn good, so I'm yeah, I'm pretty happy with uh, this result to be honest. Um, is this a perfect result? Um, probably not. <laughs> And that, that is one of the things that you always have to keep in mind, that um, your end result really is dependent on how accurate you are. Um, we can double check whether or not this is correct, just in case, um, for example, we could use the um, we could use the find locations, the find places tool in Map Publisher to, for example, look for the train station of Sevenbergen which should be right there. So if I plug in station and search, it doesn't find anything. There we go. Let's actually show the bus stop <laughs> across the road from the train station. Um, considering that this building is where my office is right now and I can almost see the train station from out of my window, you can trust me that this is actually correct. So that's it in a nutshell for this method. So keep in mind um, four locations, try and make sure that they're as close to the corners of the map as possible. Try and pick locations that are highly unlikely to be shifted graphically. Um, so the center of the roads, corners of buildings, although we might have to deal with a little bit of um, 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 shearing, I guess you would call that in English. So if the, f the aerial photo is not completely orthorectified. You see the side of the building, and then on the other side you'll see that it kind of overhangs a bit. Um, so keeping all of that in mind, and as you can see, it's a pretty painless process, really.